Is this a joke? This better be a joke. It is a complete joke, and it's not even funny. <sighs> Hello everyone, this is the Social Justice Game Master, and today we are reviewing Wendy's Presents Feast of Legends. That's right, this game was made by Wendy's, the fast food company. 1. It's a bad D&D reskin. Imagine playing D&D, but everything is Wendy's themed. Your fire mage is now called a member of the order of the spicy chicken sandwich. Your weapons are all cutlery shaped. Healing potions are just lemonade or strawberry lemonade. And all of the spells have the Wendy's logo in them. The leader of the great nation of Frostovia is Queen Wendy and her enemy. The villain of the campaign is the Ice Jester a clown known for freezing meat. Does that sound fun to you? Okay, for a few minutes the whole thing might get a few laughs, but imagine playing an entire campaign where every element of the setting is here to remind you of how great eating at Wendy's is and how the competing fast food sucks. That sounds painful to me. After a few sessions of using the skill called Make it a Double, you're going to find the entire experience a bit stale. And every attempt in the game to remind you of Freshtovia's legendary freshness is going to leave you with a bad taste in your mouth. Sorry if I'm a bit salty, but this game brings absolutely nothing new to the table. I've read through the whole thing and it has nothing innovative about its game mechanics or world building. Well, that's wrong actually. There is one game mechanic that is at the same time a stroke of marketing genius and a disastrous omen for the gaming community. 2. Eat Wendy's or die. Page 10 of the Feast of Legends rulebook is, I'm sure, going to go down in history as one of the most infamous cash grab attempts in tabletop history. This page is called Buffs and Debuffs and it lists the bonuses you get in game for eating a Wendy's product out of game. It also lists the penalties you receive for the sacrilege of eating snacks, gas station food, or any item sold by competing fast food companies. That's right, if you bring chips to this game, you get a minus two penalty to your grace rolls. But if you buy any drinks from Wendy's, you get a plus one to grace. So you can pay to play your way into this game. And that's a big problem. Pay to play was mostly limited to video games until now, and it was already a scourge upon the genre. But if you start to see it in joke role playing games like this, you could soon see it in more mainstream games. And that's worrisome to me. It's a continuation of the trend to make us cough as much money as possible. You can already see it in games like Black Crusade, one of Warhammer 40k's games that I previously covered on the channel. This game's expansions allow you to make starting characters that are way more powerful than the starting characters from the core book. The Slanish expansion lets you start as the captain of a massive ship, while the Zinch book gives starting players access to late game psychic powers at character creation. So if you cough up a bit of extra money, you get to be the best at the game. And Feast of Legends is just the next step down this path. But Social Justice Game Master, I hear you say, you don't need to use the pay to play rules in your game, you can just choose not to apply it at your gaming table. Rule number one is to have fun. Well, thank you for making this remark. Yes, rule number one is having fun in D&D. This game, Feast of Legend, has no such rule. So some Game Master might choose to apply it and incentivize your weekly gaming meetup to turn into a weekly paycheck for the local Wendy's. Even worse, some rules lawyer type players might show up to a game with a full meal and insist on getting the bonuses that they paid for. And that means that the players who can't afford it have to choose between taking the penalty to their stats by munching on something else, or sit on their hunger in a game that constantly reminds you of food. 3. Ads in the Mind's Theater Branded games are nothing new. Monopoly has editions linked to multiple TV shows and other brands, which is quite ironic for a game that was designed to prove how horrible capitalism is. Likewise, we have already seen games that are just expansions of already existing settings and brands. 
On this channel alone, we've already talked about how Cthulhu role-playing games build upon the lore established by H.P. Lovecraft's terribly racist lore, and how the Warhammer 40k games use the innate far-right ideology of the setting to sell more copies. But this is a step too far for me. When this doesn't have an established universe that is beloved by fans to sell its stories in, it's just a restaurant chain. They sell food, not games. That's why this game is free, because it's not a product. It's an ad. It's an ad that is funny enough to get some people to try it, and with the right game master, they could convince people to buy their shitty, shitty food just to get a plus one for the night. And if that's where we're at with the hobby now, then what's next? Is it gonna be possible to Venmo D&D to get better loot? Will your game master soon get sponsored for describing Coca-Cola ads in your cyberpunk games? Are we going to let our hobby get invaded by brands and marketing like this? Because if we go down that route, we might end up where video games are at right now, with microtransactions. And nobody who plays games wants that. But I'm sure there's an executive somewhere that's watching this video and getting dollar signs in his eyes. This has been my review of the month. Thank you for watching the entire video. If you liked it, please consider sharing it with your fellow gamers, liking it, and subscribing for more content like this.